Here's our third example of a trait in human beings that violates Mendel's principle. It's a disease that, that's called Duchenne muscular dystrophy, and it's the most common of the forms of muscular dystrophy. Muscular, muscular dystrophy is a really nasty disease. It's a wasting syndrome that occurs when the muscles atrophy for a variety of reasons. In this particular case, the contractile machinery of the, of the cells is not attached properly to the cell membranes, and so when the machinery contracts, the, the cell itself doesn't very much and so the nerves don't sense the, cell, the uh, muscle contracting and just like anything else in the human body there's a use it or lose it proposition that you were born with and that is if you don't use a muscle it's going to atrophy if you do use it it'll hypertrophy and get bigger but these poor people get to a situation where their muscles waste away to the point where they no longer can breathe properly and ventilate their lungs properly the diaphragm gets really weak but especially the intercostal muscles of the, of the skeleton and the rib cage. They also have other problems too. They have uh, learning difficulties because of lack of blood flow to the brain and other things going on. There's decreased heart function because the heart is also affected by this. Uh, there's all sorts of things like I mentioned with the, with the uh, respiration and it also because the bones are not being pulled on by these muscles they atrophy as well and so they become brittle and very easily broken. So this is an inherited form of this disease. There are other forms of muscular dystrophy. This one unfortunately is one that uh, ch children get from their parents. And it is, it's very debilitating. Typically, the reason they're showing you a child in this picture is because this is about the age where they are devastated by the disease and they rarely live much longer after this age that you're looking at here. Okay, so what is the pattern? Well, here's what we know. Suppose you have two healthy people and they have a child with DMD. If that's all you know, you have two healthy people have a child with DMD, I know two things. First, that kid's a boy. Second, the mother, whether she knows it or not, probably has a family history. Almost certainly has a family history of this disease somewhere in her family. So how is it that you can know these things? You know them because this particular trait is an example of what we call a sex-linked trait. A sex-linked trait, by definition, is a trait that's on one of the sex chromosomes, either X or Y, and not the other. That makes it a sex-linked trait. There's a really common misconception out there that I run into a lot, and that is that, that people think that a, a sex-linked trait is a trait that can only occur in one sex. That's not the definition of it. In fact, DMD can occur in females. It just doesn't for a reason which I'll talk about here shortly. The point is, a sex-linked trait is a trait that can be carried by either sex chromosome. That means there's two different types of sex-linked traits. There's X-linked, which are traits that are carried on the X chromosome, but not the Y. And there's Y-linked, which are traits that are carried on the Y and not the X. Now, X-linked traits are far more interesting from this perspective than Y-linked traits. Y-linked traits are very, very straightforward and very easy to follow. There's one Y-linked trait that is obvious, and that's being a male. If you have a particular part of the chromosome of the Y chromosome called the SRY region, you develop anatomically male. And that's it. So this is the thing. Y-link traits are always, they always have that, that property. Males can get them, but females can't. And I think that's one of the reasons why it is that people sort of get, the, get into this mis misconception that an X-link trait means that only females can get it or whatever. That's not at all what it, what's going on. But the point is, these X-link traits are interesting because of this. Males and females both end up with an X chromosome. Y-link traits are boring because only males have a Y. So because males and females have the X, you can get some very interesting patterns, and that's what's going on here. So let's take a look at that. There are different alleles for this trait, and it's carried only on the X chromosome. That's what makes it an X-linked trait or sex-linked trait. So when we write it, we always write it with the chromosome X, and then we put as a superscript the gene. And this is to demonstrate that it's on the X chromosome, and I will insist that we use this notation. This is the proper professional notation for this. Now, notice I only use X and Y for these types of traits, only sex-linked traits. The other traits that we've been discussing, you don't put an X or a Y there because they're not on the sex chromosomes. They're on different chromosomes. Only use this notation for sex-linked traits. Okay, now there are two alleles. There's the allele that makes a normal healthy muscle, which is D, and then there's the allele that makes this dysfunctional muscle, which is little d. Okay, so big D is normal, little d is bad. Okay, in this case then, that gives us a number of different types of, of genotypes and phenotypes. 
Here are the possible phenotypes. And in this case, because it's sex linked, we have to keep track of the sex or the gender of the individual. So in this case, we could have a healthy female or a healthy male. And we could also have DMD female or a DMD male. Now remember, I said in the previous meeting, I knew it would have to be a male was the, was the child that had DMD. But it is possible, although again, we don't see it, for a female to have DMD. Because in order to get a female genotype, you have two Xs. And she could be big D, big D, which would make her healthy. She could also be big D, little d, which would also make her healthy. And she could be little d, little d, which would make her DMD. Okay, now look at this. And what does this look like? Is this Mendelian dominance? Is it uh, uh, incomplete dominance? Is it co-dominance? Is it something else? What is it? Well, okay, fall back on that definition of dominance. Dominance is if it's in the heterozygote and it's expressed fully in the heterozygote, it's dominant. So notice this individual is heterozygous, but they have DMD. But this uh, uh, is not. This is normal. They're perfectly normal. So therefore, normal is dominant to DMD. DMD is recessive. So here's an example where dominance is not the one that's violated. Something else is violated. Okay, now in the males, the males are XY, so we have to represent both. Okay, so if we do this, we say X big D, Y, and that would be a healthy male. A DMD male would be X little d, Y. Notice males cannot be heterozygous because males can only get one of these genes because they only have one X. So in this case, this is what's violated. For males, you don't have two particles per trait. You only have one, and it came from the mother. So that is the violation. All right, now in this situation, if we look at this one that I've highlighted in blue, notice that she's different than this genotype. Okay, and that's because she's heterozygous. She's healthy, just like this one, just as healthy, but she's heterozygous. So that makes her what we call a carrier. A carrier of a trait is an individual who does not express the trait, but can pass it on to their offspring. Okay? All right. So, let's take a look at this then. How do we know that the child of those two healthy individuals that had DMD had to be male? How did we know that? Now, it comes directly from this. You can deduce it from no more than the information that I've given you on this slide. Okay, so to answer that question, we all we have to do is look at the genotype of the father. Okay, so no, we know he's healthy, therefore his genotype must be X big D Y. Which means this, if he were to have a daughter, he would have to pass his daughter the X big D allele. He can't have passed her the Y or else she would be a son. So given that she is a girl, she must get the X big D, but remember Duchenne muscular dystrophy is recessive. Therefore she can't possibly be uh, anything but healthy. All right, so that's the situation. So we know just from that alone that the daughter could only be healthy because the only way for her to be sick is if she's X little d, X little d, and she got a big D from her dad. Now we know more than that, though, too, because since we know the child is sick and the father must be this, that means the child must have gotten the X chromosome from its mother. So the mother must be X big D, X little d. She can't be X little d, X little d because she's not sick. She's got, uh, she does not have Duchenne muscular dystrophy. So those situations then are fairly straightforward. You can work those kinds of problems out. But there are some other issues too that you gotta think through. Here are some other thought questions. Suppose the mom gets pregnant. What's the probability that they'll have another child with DMD? Okay, well, work that out. We know her genotype must be this. We know his genotype must be that. Okay, now if we do the Punnett square, we can work that out that way, or we can look at it this way. Half the time, mom's going to give a big D, and half the time, she's going to give a little d. Half the time, dad gives a big D, half the time, he gives a Y. So, mom could get a, big, get a big D for half the time, and dad could give a big D, in which case, you have a healthy female a quarter of the time. Mom could give a little d, and dad could give a big D, in which case, you have a healthy female a quarter of the time. So, there's a half. All Half of the kids are healthy females. Now, one half of the time dad gives a y and mom one half of the time gives a d so half times half would make x big d y which is a healthy male okay so a quarter of the time the male would be healthy or you could have half, uh, half the time the dad gives a, a y half the time the mom gives a x little d half times half gives you x little d y a quarter of the time and that's a dmd kid so three healthy kids and, and one 
of them has DMD, so the probability would be one quarter. Okay, but now suppose we know that she has a girl. What's the probability now? Right? Well, if, she, if we know she has a girl, then we know the father had to have given that big D because he has to give the X to make the girl. And that then indicates that the girl is guaranteed to be healthy, so they don't have anything to worry about at zero. Okay, but suppose they made a mistake. And in fact, actually, when they did the original whatever analysis they did with ultrasound or whatever, and they discovered that it's actually a boy, not a girl. Now what's the probability? The answer is not a quarter, because now we know it's a boy, and we know that the father had to have given the Y. So that means then, since we guarantee that the father gives a Y, that happens with probability one, so half the time it's going to be a healthy boy because the mom gives big X, D, uh, X big D, and half the time it's going to be a DMD boy. So now the probability is one half. So we have to be careful to follow that through.